A walk through one of Seattle's Olmstead parks is like taking a short retreat into the country. As you immerse yourself in the scenery, the city noise fades away, the pace slows, and there is space to breathe. We could walk deep into Seward Park and marvel at the huge old growth trees. Sit on a bench at Coleman Park, enjoying a breeze off Lake Washington. Or paddle a canoe through the lily pads in the Washington Park Arboretum. All perfect antidotes to the stress and noise of city life. We are very lucky to have these parks. Open space is a precious commodity in a fast-growing city. Fortunately, this was apparent to Seattle's civic leaders more than a century ago. The park commissioners then had been studying eastern cities and understood the importance of having a well-developed park system for the health and economic vitality of a growing city. And in 1903, Seattle's Board of Park Commissioners forever changed the face of the city when they contracted with the foremost landscape architecture firm in the country, the Olmsted Brothers of Brookline, Massachusetts. The Olmsted Brothers were John Charles Olmsted and Frederick Law Olmsted, Jr., sons of the well-known Frederick Law Olmsted, Sr. Trained by their father, John Charles and Frederick, Jr., carried on his work and philosophy long after his retirement. The senior Olmsted, often called the father of landscape architecture in America, is best known as the co-designer with Calvert Vaux of New York Central and Prospect Parks. His brilliant design set the standard for public parks throughout the nation. Olmsted design parks are distinguished by their landscape artistry, which captures the natural beauty of the site. In Seattle, the firm particularly recommended that new plantings of native trees and shrubs harmonize with the existing plants and that the parks mold to the natural contours of the land. Just as influential was the Olmsted's philosophy on the role parks played in people's lives, that being outdoors in beautiful surroundings was beneficial to people and made for a healthier society. Olmsted and his sons defined the American planned landscape, both public and private, creating and preserving an extraordinary legacy for future generations. John Charles Olmsted was responsible for Seattle's park plan. His system of naturalistic parks and parkways includes many of our most beautiful places. Washington Park Arboretum, Volunteer Woodland, Green Lake, and Seward Parks, as well as 30 other Seattle area parks and boulevards. His public work in Seattle also included the site plans for the 1909 Alaska-Yukon Pacific Exposition which shaped much of the grounds of the University of Washington campus. Almost 100 years after it was first designed, Seattle's park system still embodies the ongoing importance of the Olmsted philosophy in shaping the quality of our lives. It's possible today to follow a twisting path through the woods in one of Seattle's parks and recapture a sense of how it must have looked when John Charles Olmsted first saw it. Olmsted and his assistant Percy Jones arrived in Seattle on April 30, 1903. They could not have timed it better. Money from the Klondike Gold Rush and revenues from timber production had helped make Seattle a wealthy city. Also, the City Beautiful Movement, an initiative for well-designed, elegant, and livable cities, was sweeping the nation. In 1902, a full-page article in the Seattle Post-Intelligencer quoted leading citizens and the park commissioners who urged the city to develop a comprehensive park system. At the time, the city owned 10 tracts of park land. There were also four private amusement parks serviced by streetcar lines, which had been built by developers to attract potential real estate buyers. These would later be added to the city's park system. Olmsted and Jones spent the entire month of May visiting the existing public and private parks, as well as many sites the park commissioners recommended. They took detailed field notes and photographs of what they saw. Their explorations by horse, trolley, boat, and foot were a favorite topic in Olmsted's daily letters to his wife, Sophie. The observations and impressions he shared with her reveal how much Olmsted came to appreciate, while maybe not the weather, certainly the wildness the beauty of the Pacific Northwest landscape. My dear wife, 
It rained last night and pretty much all day, but lightly. The total rainfall of Seattle is not heavy, but it keeps everlastingly at it. Today I have been tramping along the borders of Lake Washington. The woods were perfectly charming. The Oregon grape was green and wet and glossy, and great evergreen ferns made it seem like summer. It smelled like a greenhouse too, though a coolish one. Delicious air here. I wish I could send you a few breathfuls of it. Ever your loving husband, John. Olmsted left Seattle on June 6th and within a month sent his formal report back to the park commissioners. After publication in the paper and endorsement by various civic clubs, the Seattle City Council approved Olmsted's report in November 1903. His introduction included the following assessment. Seattle possesses extraordinary landscape advantages in having a great abundance and variety of water views and views of wooded hills and distant mountains and snow-capped peaks. It also possesses some valuable remains of the original evergreen forests, which covered the whole country. In designing a system of parks and parkways, the primary aim should be to secure and preserve for the use of the people as much as possible of these advantages. Seattle's citizens were inspired. In the eight years following the original proposal, citizens passed bonds totaling four and a half million dollars for park enhancement. With this money, the city also acquired enough property to double the park lands to more than 1,000 acres. Every park designed by Olmsted has a distinct character that complements its surroundings. Volunteer Park, considered to be the gem of Seattle's Olmsted parks, has the most formal design. Sweeping lawns, scattered groves, and borders surround a reservoir. The view across the reflective water of the reservoir to the distant Olympic Mountains provides the major focus of the park. In contrast, in his design for Frink Park, Olmsted left much of the landscape alone. In his notes, he said he was pleased with the romantic and secluded ravine and steep wooded hillsides, which he thought gave a decidedly marked and interesting character to the park. His plan called for paths, footbridges, and a bridge over the ravine, but left the wild growth and the tall trees. In Seward Park, 120 acres of old growth forest were preserved. Pedestrian walkways lead through the forest to open spaces with stunning views of Lake Washington, Mount Rainier, and the Cascades. Wide grassy meadows and three miles of shoreline serve as a natural preserve for birds. Washington Park Arboretum is both a living plant museum and a public park. The Arboretum's 230 acres of specimen trees and shrubs are intermingled under a native canopy and arranged in a variety of ecological environments. Small winding pathways and wide grassy boulevards wind through the landscape, leading people from one distinct environment to another. Olmsted did not always leave the land alone. At Green Lake, he recommended lowering the lake by four feet to create more park space. The city eventually lowered the lake seven feet, thereby adding 100 acres of land. This lake within a park has become one of Seattle's most popular places. To connect all of these parks, Olmsted proposed a 23-mile system of parkways and tree-lined boulevards. These parkways were ideally wide enough to be divided into a roadway, bike path, and pedestrian walkway, and to encompass the natural scenery. They followed the shore of Lake Washington, branching out to link the major parks from Seward to Beacon Hill and Washington Park to Green Lake. Olmsted's plan also included numerous playgrounds and playfields, a new concept to Seattle. These parks, which he recommended locating within a half mile of every home, included field houses, ball fields, and playground apparatus. Olmsted made numerous trips to Seattle to implement the plan. From 1903 until his death in 1920, he remained one of the principal landscape architects for the Olmsted brothers' work in Seattle. The firm, represented by James Frederick Dawson, continued its work in Seattle through the planning of Washington Park Arboretum and Azalea Way.
Today, Seattle's Olmsted Parks are recognized nationally. Taken together, they are the third largest Olmsted design park system in the country, and experts rank it among the most fully implemented systems that is still intact. These parks, masterpieces of landscape artistry, are gifts from the past that we should treasure and protect for future generations to enjoy. The parks have aged gracefully. Although some of the plantings may not be as lush as they once were, the trees have grown majestic. And the views and spaces that Olmsted saw nearly 100 years ago are, as he hoped, secured and preserved for the use of the people. <laughs>